All right, so I've got another video today for you, and this is an install video. So I sell a generator auto start stop box that interfaces a Victron based uh, installation and a generator in an RV. And so what this box does is it creates that link between the two. So that way your, your Victron based system can automatically start and stop your generator, which will gives you a periodic testing of it, but also will start your generator if the state of charge gets low. So with that box I sell, often the question is, well, how do you install it? So I thought I would do is um, create a video on how I install it. I'm working on a full on solar install of this Coachman Rada. This video is mainly for the generator start stop install of it. And it is for reference only. Uh, it does require some electrical knowledge. And if you're not comfortable with it, I would say buy the box and hire a professional to install it for you. So, but without further ado, let me show you how I get this box installed. All right. so. This is the system I'm working on currently. In the corner here is the Gen Start Stop box that uh, we're going to be installing. So it comes pre-wired. It's going to look just like this. There's seven wires that need to be connected to the system. I've already pre-run the seven wires and I'm going to connect it to here and we're going to show you how to do that. So one of the first things you need to do is obviously you got to connect to the generator somehow. So you got to find the generator start and the generator stop remote wires. Now, one at one location you can do is right at the the wires, the wire harness that's coming out of the generator. Or if you have a remote control panel inside of the coach, you can tap off of those wires. For this specific install, just because of where the remote switch is located inside, I'm going to be tapping into the wires right on the generator. And so let's go see what that looks like and get that connected. All right, so I'm back out here by the generator and I've unplugged the harness from the generator. Let me see if I can turn this camera around here for a second and show you. This is what we're looking at. So I unplug, this is the remote harness and this is what goes to the generator. So these are the pins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap into the wires and we are going to then go to the other side. So I already pre-ran two wires that I, are needed. And these are two wires that I'm gonna splice into the factory harness to get the gen start stuff to it. So I didn't show you how to run this because every coach is gonna be different, but basically these they go through and then they're gonna run underneath the length of the coach and then back to that bay of where the gen start stop box is. All right, so I have verified that on this harness that the yellow is the start wire and the dark brown wire is the stop wire. So if you look at the connections here where they go, there's A, B, C, D on this marked here. And I know C is the start and B is the stop, so yellow and brown. So we'll do the start wire first. So I got these uh, handy dandy splice connectors. Basically they just slip over. I'm gonna slip over the wire like so. And then I'm gonna take my wire, which I'm gonna use the red one for. And get that connected. And I'll put that inside of here. Yeah, these are just a little tricky sometimes to get make sure they're all the way in. Make sure the wires aren't coming out. Then we can close it. So now we've tapped into the start wire. And now we're going to do the same thing for the stop wire, which is the dark brown. So every RV is going to be built differently, so you will need to verify with your particular RV whether or not the colors match this or not. When in doubt, look online and try to find a manual for your specific generator for the remote panel. So just because it worked on this one doesn't mean it's going to work on all of them. So clip this in there as well. So 
So this is in there. You can close this. Tuck this back up in here where it was. And then we'll make sure that this is clipped together. And then we will, I'm gonna leave this open because I wanna make sure that it's gonna you know, verify functionality before we close up everything. All right, so for ease of simplicity and not making a very long video, I've already pre-wired or pre-ran the seven wires that I need from my system that need to be hooked up to the Gen Start Stop box. And then the generator start stop wires, those code come through as I had to extend them a little bit longer, but they're basically the orange and yellow wires here. So I am a big fan of Wago connectors. They make the job go easy and they work well. People love them or people hate them. So I got the seven wires stripped back. Just gonna go ahead and pop on a Wago connector on basically all of them with the exception of the system positive wire. So this is, and I'll show you on the other side when we get to it, but basically we have our servo common wire. We've got our servo normally closed and our servo normally open relay wires. So these three wires, you'll see me do the same colors uh, here in a little bit on the servo GX. So these, if we open these up, what we look for is, again, I've color coded my wires, is we have the, the relay, the normally closed. So that's gonna come here, white to white. We have our relay normally open wire that's going to connect into here and then we have our relay common not to be confused with the relay or the the system power wire so those are going to connect in here like that and we'll get those just kind of tucked out of the way for now they do take a little bit of space, but there's plenty of space in the box to hide and tuck the wires. These are just very low power, you're talking milliamperage, so not high voltage by, by any means. So, and then we'll get this guy tucked in here as well. Trying to make an informative but not long boring video for you guys so we'll get those here in a second so and likewise i'm going to go ahead and cut these a bit shorter i don't need them so long good wire cutters all right so we're just going to go ahead and shorten these up a bit and then we'll do the same thing and then we match up colors again. But as you can see, all the relays here are labeled with the tags of where they go to. Alright. So then we got our system positive and our system negative. And I'm gonna go ahead and we'll do the negative one first. All right, so this will give us our negative. The nice thing about this box, it does work with 12, 24, 48 volt systems. Um, because it does not send your system positive voltage to uh, your generator. It, the generator is looking for a negative signal. So that's the beauty of this. It works on all voltage systems. Right, so I've just got to kind of shove these wires in here a bit. So this box here was an earlier iteration. So 
the boxes I'm selling now, it actually comes with a positive wire that comes out of the bottom here. This um, box didn't have it, but basically your system wire would go in the bottom here. So we're just gonna go ahead and splice this in there and get it connected. So. By the way, if you haven't seen these Nipix, Knipix, however you say it, wire strippers, look how easy that is. I love them. So again, this positive wire is now included automatically, so you don't have to worry about trying to find where that hole is. Make sure it's German, good and tight. And that is those seven wires that connect to the box. So as you can see, it's really not that bad. It comes color coded, it comes labeled. You just gotta connect the seven wires to your system. And again, that is positive, system positive, system negative, the three servo wires, and then the generator start, generator stop. So we're gonna get the servo side connected and then we'll get to programming the servo and then testing it to see if it works. All right, so here is the Servo GX. But basically this terminal block just pulls out and allows you easier to put those uh, the wires in. I'm a big fan of using ferrules where possible. So I got my wires stripped. I'm gonna go get grab my ferrules in the crimping tool and we'll get those on there and then we'll get this plugged in. So with the Servo relays, you do need some fairly long ferrules. These are 12 millimeter ferrule pins. crimping tool then one done two done all right so these wires are uh, user provided so you have to provide these three wires and go to the gen start stop box so you should know which color wires you plugged into the common the normally open and normally closed I kept mine as the same as the gen start stop box to keep it easy so I'm gonna go ahead and if you look here, it tells you, so common, which in, in my case is the red, will go in the middle. We'll go ahead and get that pushed in. And then normally open, which I know for me is blue. And then the last one, the normally closed, goes in here. So if you look here, push this back in. Again, blue, normally open, common, normally closed. All right, and that is all you need to do for the wiring portion. All right, so here we are. Here's the touch screen. This is just the touch 50. And we're gonna go ahead and get this program. So if we go to menu, settings, we first have to go down to, I believe it's relay, function one, relay. We want it to be generator start stop. We hit the check mark. Don't forget the check mark. Uh, go back. Now we can go to the generator start stop function and then we can go down here to settings and then we can tell it conditions um, state of charge the state of charge value so when we say when it's lower than and you can set this to whatever value you want I'm going to set it to 35 and then and then we're going to stop it when it gets back to 85% And then you can also do the start stop based on current, voltage, load, inverter temperature, and then you can also set up periodic running. So we will now go and we'll try to start it. But I'm going to go and stand back by the generator and I will start this with using VRM. That way we can make sure the generator is working. All right, so we're back here by the generator now and I got VRM pulled up on my phone and we're going to give this a try. Everything done right, everything wired right, it should fire right up. So click the start button, confirm it. It's gonna count down. And now you can see it's priming. And it's gonna start it here in a second.
and there you have it generator start stop from the victron remote app is working pretty simple to install all right so hopefully i didn't go too fast in this video i didn't want to make it very long it's really not that hard to install so that's a recap of how you install this gen start stop box again seven wires system positive system negative servo three wires and then the generator start stop i showed you how on this particular coach i was able to intercept or splice in to the start and stop wires again every coach is going to be different yeah this box comes pre-labeled comes ready to go so if you're interested send me an email at inquire at faithfuljourneyrv.com or go to my website faithfuljourneyrv.com and you can send me a message through my website and i'll get back to you about getting one ordered so hopefully you guys found this informative and interesting and uh hopefully it will work well for your guys system as well till next time thanks for watching